Hey, good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I am your host, Jack, and this is Photography Weekly, episode number 70 for Sunday, December the 2nd, 2012. Coming up in today's show, a live shoot. I know we've been talking about it for a while, and a lot of people have been emailing me and asking me to do one just to kind of help you and teach you uh, more with the photography aspect of it, more than just editing. So today we're going to be teaching you how to use one light with a couple modifiers. The modifiers are very inexpensive and I'll show you those and we'll walk through how to use those to make it look like you actually have more than one light. Um, we actually will be using picture in picture today. I'll set that up like we did in the past and what that means is you can actually see the picture uh, basically being taken. Uh, you'll see which way uh, the model is spinning or sitting in the light. Uh, you'll see the modifiers going up and then you'll see the picture coming up on the screen. So you get to see all of that happening. Um, and actually, like I said already today, uh, my model is my wife, Mary. She's also known by a lot of you folks as Mrs. Jack. Uh, we've been talked uh, about. And you've seen her millions of times. I told her, I said, this is the only time she's ever been live on the show. But you've seen her millions of times in my photo editing and we've never had a problem, right? Everybody enjoys seeing the wife on the edits so so with that said I'm going to go ahead and get started with this show so let's go ahead and get started today with episode number 70 The, the speed light we're using today is going to be my Nikon SB600, which you could still find used on eBay, but the new one is an SB700, and there is an even newer one, which is a larger flash called the SB900. Uh, the 900 will set you back to about 600 bucks, the 700 about three about 300, and the SB600 you can find for about 250, or you can buy the Young Nuo flashes for about 60 bucks that we've also worked with in the past. So. We're going to be using this one just because it's the one I pulled out of the bag. It doesn't really matter. We're going to be shooting manual mode today, which means we're not going to be using TTL. We're going to be doing everything on the fly by seeing how we're going to see the picture, and uh, we'll get it set up with the lighting that way. I think I probably will use the light meter just to make the this class flow a little bit better. Uh, to give you a little bit of an idea of the light meter in the studio, and we'll get working with that. So... And it's 54 degrees in Michigan. And Jake the Snake is hot-blooded this morning. See how he put that on there? So that's good. Thanks, Jake. Jake is my Cincinnati Bengals friend. So that's where he is. Okay. So for those of you that rushed out last week after we talked about the light meter and purchased them, now you get to see how to use it a little bit. So we're going to use it here. Uh, again, it's not a light meter class. This is a one light photography class. All right. So we're going to have Mary come over and sit in our chair. Just like so, as she's sitting in the chair. This is where they're seeing you. This is the camera they're seeing you. But you're going to be looking at this camera is what you're going to be using here. So I'm just directing her towards the lens of the DSLR, right? Because we're taking the pictures there. What we're going to do first is I thought it would be interesting first off, and it's kind of hard because I can't see our own video. <laughs> see if you can see me here. <laughs> but what I thought would be would be the best to first to do is show you how to do it, take a picture with ambient lighting. And what ambient lighting is we have an overhead light on in the room so if you have a lamp on in your room or whatever, um, then that's the light you would be using. I'm going to take a picture that way first, just to show you that it can be done, and we'll see what it looks like. And then we're going to start introducing our different light and modifiers. So what I'm going to do first is turn my light meter on. We talked about this last week on ambient lighting. And I have it set already to 1600 of the ISO. We're going to take that back though. Let's just take it back to... 800, I'll take a reading, and we're going to try to go up here a little bit. We're 
We're gonna try to shoot these today at an aperture of 5.0 just to keep everything nicely and focused. Uh, we're not gonna get real fancy with the depth of field and everything. But at ISO 800, we're gonna shoot at a shutter speed of 30. So I'm gonna do is plug this into my camera. We're now going to go to a uh, 24 by 70 lens. Get that a little bit wider shot. People chatting? I can't no, you said wider. Oh, wider lens. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. There's already a tripod mount on the camera. That's pretty handy. No wonder it was being so heavy as I step on my mic cord about break my leg. Okay. Let me just get another look here and see what we're looking like now. That's a lot better. You always pick one eye and focus on an eye. We're going to try a test shot here. Okay, we'll make sure that we have... Oops. We're going to make sure that we have this up full screen here so we can see it. So they can see it they want to see what's going on now that is just with ambient light and that's not too bad huh might want to pull your eye hair back out of your eyes just a little bit all right let's try one more like this just to make sure don't smile too hard nice easy there you go Again, that's just another just normal light in the room. So we didn't spend any money at all. We just took, what's that? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce a flash into this mix. So what it's going to do, first of all, it's going to change our ISO settings. When I shoot with flash, I always shoot at ISO 100. Is where I start at, let's say depending on how bright your flash is going to be. But normally ISO 100 is okay to start at. So I changed my light meter. We're going to turn this flash on over here. And what we're going to use the flash at is just basically half power. So half power on this particular flash. 64, half of 64 is 32. Okay. Okay, half power from this flash, which goes down to 1 over 64. Actually, you know what? We're going to take it down to 1 over. We get the flash set right. There you go. Okay, we're going to go to 1 16th is where we're at right now with the flash power. So, if I don't kill myself with this cord. Alright, then what we're going to do here is you take your flash meter, change the mode to flash on your light meter. If you can see this, we'll try to bring it up. Once again, this today is not a light meter class. We're going to do that here in the future. But you push the button on the side, then you have to trigger that flash. Now, I'll trigger with my wireless trigger. If I turn it on, yeah. Then you ask your model to hold this right by their face, like this, aim to the light. And what that's going to do is give us a reading. So we're going to push the button, hold it right there, right, here. Nope, right up by your face, right there. Press nope, it's already pressed. Okay. Then all you do is take a reading. And now we're at f8, and we're at the shutter speed of 200, is where we're at right now. All right, so F8, and just kind of monitoring the chat room in case you're having any trouble hearing or seeing anything that's going on. So let's take our ISO setting back down to 100, our aperture up to 8, and our shutter speed to 200. Now, if you remember last week, folks, we talked about shutter speed, and I'm going to try to sh I'm going to try to show that to you here today, but. If you get higher than the sync speed of your shutter, 
you're gonna get that black line on there and I'll show you what that is because we're not using high-speed sync so we're our max shutter speed is 250 and I know we talked about that let's see here let's try and keep up on the uh, chat room all right so we're gonna try this now with that setting with the flash on okay here we go okay so what we did there we actually got to the point now where we got rid of some of that ambient light because the flash is overpowering the ambient light we talked about that last week now what you can do there is a couple things right we can open up the aperture or we can slow the shutter speed down a little bit to open it up more so what we're going to do first of all first of all is if you can see the and the pictures always mess me up it's the right side of the face is darker than the left side of the face that's because the light naturally is on the left side of the face. So we're going to take another meter reading, but this time I'm going to have her bring it over here on the other side of her face so we can try to get some more light on that side instead of it dying right here. All right. So this time just hold it like over here. Right about there. Yeah. Let's just see what we get there. All right, now we're at f5.6. So just taking a meter reading on the opposite side of the face, seeing how much light we need to come across, we actually changed our aperture setting by a lot. So let's take a look. And everything else stayed, I'm sorry, everything else stayed the same. Shutter speed of 200, ISO of 100. Take a quick shot. And let's see what we come up with now. Now you can see we have more light coming across the face because we took that reading. What you're going to find though is you got to be careful because you don't want to overexpose the left side of the face to be able to light the right side of the face. So what you're going to do now since you only have one light, right? We're kind of stuck. We're like, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? Well, the light's directly on the left side of the face. So let's move the light first. And what I'd like to do with these lights is I don't want to point it directly at the person right you don't want to get it directly at your model because then you're going to probably blind them so you probably don't want to do that you probably want to get this light so it's actually fanning across the person more all right just like so and then that should look okay we'll get another quick reading just to be sure just hold it right about middle there okay all right now again I'm back at f8 so let's take a look at that folks and see what we got shutter speed of 200 f8 let's see where we're at now with our one light is that it that's the new one mm -hmm. okay so that's your new picture right there so as you see we do have some limitations with one light we're kind of getting stuck because we can't really light the whole face up properly to get that nice soft wrap around light. So we're going to introduce our first actual, uh, if I don't pull this microphone off of me, we're going to show you our first light modifier that's very inexpensive and we used it in the past. So we're going to pick that up here. All right. And the light modifier is the, see if we can get this in the shot, yep, is the reflector. Now this is just a normal round reflector. These come from Amazon for about 18 bucks. And they're nice to carry because you can fold it up. You put it in this nice little case and now you have a light source you can carry with you outside. So it's a very, very nice light source. We're going to open it up. But today we're going to use it as our secondary light. There's two ways you can do this. One, you can have a, an assistant, which I normally don't have on any shoot, or you can have a handy dandy, if you can see it here, I think you can, a light stand, all right? So the light stand, we're gonna just put on the opposite side of Mary, if I can get this clamp off. I just hang the little thing on top of the light stand 
I'm going to raise it up some. Yeah, maybe that was up all the way. Let's raise this one up some. All right. Maybe there. And see, folks, this gives Mary also a reason to see, well, I know now why Jack buys all that stuff. He can keep buying more stuff. See? See how she agreed to that? No, maybe not. These are also, just to show you these clamps, you can pick these up at any kind of hardware store or Home Depot. These little spring clamps are great for photography. You always need a bunch of these in your bag. Now what we're going to do this time, we're using the same amount of light. We're not changing any settings. Because we know that the light is on the left. It's going to be much more powerful. And there's going to be a reflection coming off the right to come in and actually fill that dark shadow up on the other side of the face. Let's try this out just to see if it works. Okay, let's just see what kind of shot we get. What's that? Uh, just move it out. Huh? You don't like that one? Okay. So that one you can see where it did fill the shadows in on the one side. But I think what's happening now is we're not getting enough light coming across. So we're going to take another reading here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. And this is the, the problem you're going to run into, folks, with manual flashes. Is you're going to want to keep playing around to get your power setting up okay now we're going to be at one eighth we're going to take a reading now let's take another reading here it's usually good if your light meter is turned on hold it right about there take a reading all right now we're looking at F9 because we got that power turned up. So let's just take a look here and see what we got. F9, 200, take a shot. And we're going to see what we come up with. Still not bright enough on the other side of the face. I'm still not liking the shot there too much. So at that point, what we're going to do is bring our light up some more. Because we're not getting enough reflective across the other side. Let's bring up some more. We're gonna actually turn it just about like this. And then we're gonna just bring our our reflector, we're gonna turn our reflector a little bit. Bring it up and turn it in. Let's see what we get on that shot. So when you're using manual flash, you do have a lot of trial and error. There you go. See what we get there. Yeah, so now you have more light coming in. You can see where we're getting the reflection across the other side. So I thought what we would do now is that shows you the first modifier modifier modifier. See what time we're at. Um okay, you're talking about the clamps, that's good. Everybody's seen how those are working. And uh, you're right, they shouldn't be too expensive. Uh, and Andy, you're right. Uh, everybody can ask Santa to bring yourself a couple of those clamps. That's a good idea. So that's not a really bad shot. But what we're going to look now is a different modifier. And the modifier that I'm going to show you this time, and I like using these a lot. Um, I've talked to some of you folks already about it because I started to get more into using umbrellas than I have soft boxes. Um, they all have their place, but I think everybody has to have your own preference and you have to have your own feel. And I think you have to build that over time. It's easier for me to do wraparound lighting with uh, an umbrella. And it's much more inexpensive with the umbrella than there's a soft box. And I'm going to show you with this particular umbrella, uh, again, Amazon about um, maybe 20 bucks. All right. Now the reason it's $20 though, if you check this out, look how big it is, right? 
If nothing else, take it to a golf course. You can go golfing with it if you need to. I mean, you could use it for that. But also, it has two parts to it. It has a reflective silver part inside. Show you that. And what's really important with this one, it has this black covering with the silver in there. But these actually come off and open up to a pure white shoot through. And that's what I wanted to show you today is how we can actually use that to our advantage. Because if you can see already with Mary, I'm going to try to do this. I don't know if we can get this to work, but the red shirt has a lot of light coming out, spilling down over the shirt. You may want to concentrate more on just getting the face lit up or somebody's top part and maybe not their pants or whatever. So this umbrella can do that for you. So to set it up, you do need a flash bracket on your light stand. Um, flash brackets, again, we talked about that. Go to eBay, I think I buy them for about six bucks. It doesn't have to be a great one. I would say buy four cheap ones. If you break one, throw it away and keep using the other ones. Uh, but if you buy an expensive one and break it, you're gonna feel bad. All right. So now, we're gonna put this into our light stand. I'm sure you've seen umbrellas used before, right? And open this up a little bit. Get this in there. And there's two ways we can use an umbrella. I'm gonna show you the first way um, that I kind of have been liking, or, or I've been enjoying the using the umbrellas this way, is when we shoot into the umbrella and we get that big light reflecting out. Let's show you a picture with that just to show you how that works. Now I would suggest taking another meter reading because your power at this point, uh, the modifier is going to eat up some of your power. And when you use one flash, the trick is it's 45, 45 degrees away from your model and 45 degrees up. So 45 by 45 should light them pretty well. And that looks pretty close. To 45, I think. I'll trip over there. See, Mary's already seeing why I need to buy a good wireless microphone because the cord's getting the cord's trying to kill me. But that's all right. If we did more and more and more of these live shows every week or live shoots like this, then that would be okay. But this one works pretty doggone well. I've been pretty happy with it. All right, so we have our umbrella set up now. I think you can see that. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We are going to take a reading now because it's going to change the reading. Okay, so now you just want to hold it like this, right? About there, come back towards your face just a little bit. All right, let's take a look. All right, so now it's telling me it's the aperture setting is 3.2. But you know what I'm going to do is I'll actually shut this, turn the shutter speed down a little bit. And that would change my aperture to 3.6 if I go to 1.25. So let's shoot this. So the aperture setting is going to be 3.6. And the shutter speed is 1.25. And we're going to try this shot and see what happens. Okay, try this. Alright, so let's see what happens with that shot. So there you go, you can see you have a whole lot of light coming over, it's wrapping around your person, it's very easy to do. Works very well, and the more you get that light on the 45, the less the shadows are going to come out, because the shadows are going to drop behind the person, and be out of the way behind them there. So, just want to look at this, alright. So the shadows will actually fall behind you. Before we get too much further, I told you earlier about the shutter speed going above 250. Let's see if we can do that and see if I can demonstrate this. We're going to take the shutter speed. Um, let's see here. I'm going to take the shutter speed to 400. Now I better take it down to 320 just to see if I can get that black line on there. This is going above your sync speed. This is what's going to happen. We'll take a look at that. And really, that's not bad. So I, was, I just shot that higher than my, my sync rate, and it still worked. So let's go even higher here. That's okay. I'm just shooting. I'm just showing. There you go. Yeah, so the black line is coming up. So I didn't lie to you, right? I told you. There's a sync speed to your flash. 
And if you get above that sync speed, you're going to know right away. You're going to say, whoops, I made some kind of mistake. All you got to do is look at your shutter speed and you'll say, I got it. I, I know what I did wrong. Yeah, because the, the, the shutter is actually, and there's a lot of people explaining this on YouTube better than I can. But when your shutter's going up from your camera, the first one's going up and your second curtain's coming up with it. So at 250, it's basically going up, it's flashing, then the second one comes up. So when you're going at 500, it's going up and this one's coming with it. So there's not enough available time for that flash to get in there to late the whole subject because the shutter is closing too fast or too quickly. Just on the other side of things, if you if you if this happens to you, and I'm sure we've seen this before, I'm going I'm using a flash. Um, I got my shutter down to 30. Okay, quick picture. All right, let's see what happens now. Actually, that's not too bad. That actually worked out all right. It shouldn't. Oh, see, as I'm gonna. Mary's laughing because she's watching me trip over my stuff. She's thinking I don't have to feed him dinner tonight. That's for sure. Let's go down to the shutter speed of ten. Oh, That's okay. It shouldn't. You shouldn't actually be able to see you. Yeah. yeah we'll you can see now how how it's explosive amount of light coming out of that. Right. It's just banging out of there because the shutter's too slow. So if the shutter's too too slow, you're going to have overexposure. If the shutter's too fast you're going to have that black line because your sync speed's too high. So now as I promised, we're going to take this flash here and take this umbrella and we're going to spin the system around. Now if you have decent light stands, I'm talking decent, you know, they got to be um, about, um, <laughs> see, Jessica said Mrs. Jack looks good in that one. She said she was mad she didn't have her eyes open, so anyway. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same umbrella that we paid, what did I tell you, like 20 bucks for. Take your light stand, and if you buy yourself a decent light stand, like a real expensive one, like probably $15 on Amazon, that's where these can, it'll do this. What I mean by this is I can loosen this clamp up and go from shoot into, we're going to just spin around here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go shoot through. Ah, see, Mary had a good question. She said, how do you shoot through black? Well, what's nice about this umbrella, <laughs> as I keep tripping on this microphone cord, what's nice about this particular umbrella, I told you I like about it, is it's like a multi-reversible umbrella. So we are going to increase our power now because we're shooting through it. So I'm going to go full power. Now we'll go down just a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to just unhook these little umbrella catches on the side of this umbrella. Just like so. And, well, we're going to unhook a bunch of them right first of all. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can modify the modifier. All right. So I should get right, right there. Okay. So now what we're going to do first of all is we're going to shoot through this umbrella and the trick of the umbrella is the closer you have it the softer the light. You can also get more wrap because you're getting more light. It's a bigger light source. As you pull your light further away from somebody it gets to be a smaller light source. So the closer you have it the more wrap. And that's actually not even a great place to put the wrap. Let's bring it more over here. Can you still see the monitor? And Mary's actually watching these pictures come up on the monitor so we can both see what's going on. We're going to get a light reading with the meter here. Um, we'll stay at shutter speed of 125. So if you just hold this right there, right above your face. Let's take a reading real quick. Okay. And now uh, we're at an f-stop of 10. So remember, I turned the shutter speed up. So let's see what we got here now. So we're going to go to shutter speed of 125 and f-stop of 10. Again, we're using one light outside of that reflector being the opposite light source. Let's take a picture, make sure your eyes are open this time. And we got the umbrella in the shot. So we're going we're gonna to actually back that umbrella off just a little bit more. 
and we'll look here this is one thing shooting wide or shooting tight that's the difference okay now we got it clear take a shot and see where we're at all right now there you go so to me that's a little bit dark still it's got a nice wrap around but it is a little dark so it could be because we moved the light back that's probably what happened and I didn't take another light reading so let's take another light reading and it's saying 9 I think we're on f10 right now it's saying f9 yeah let's take this shot we'll look and see if it's still dark That's a little, yeah, it's a little better. Now, if you even want that lit up more, what you, what I want you to do at this point is take your light meter, turn it off, all right? Now, we're going into that common sense mode of photography. Everything, everything I've been teaching you guys now for, what, almost two years, we're going to start rolling that through our head. If we take the shutter speed and slow it down, we're going to brighten the picture up. If we take our f-stops and open it up, we're going to also brighten the picture up. Right. If you do both at one time, you're going to overexpose. So with flash, I would say operate on your f-stop and leave your shutter speed for your ambient light. So we're going to open up our f-stop. It's 9 now. Let's just open that up and see what happens. We're going to open up to f8. So one stop. And there you go. You can already see where it's a lot brighter. It came in there real nice. And as I said, we didn't meter the opposite side of the face where the reflector is because you don't need to. This is just a reflection of that. So if that's pushing all the power, this is going to be lower powered, right? Less. If we had two lights, you have to meter both sides. Now, we talked a little bit about earlier about the fill you can see uh, coming down on the red sweater, how that light is coming down. Now, so we can modify the modifier. That's what I really like about this uh, particular umbrella. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our black, back on there. You guys must be special. Today's actually the one time I actually tore this apart. Plus today's the only time Mary's ever been wanting to do a live model shot. So you guys are really special. She said anything for the JTC crowd. Anything she can do. So cook big dinner, invite everybody up to Pittsburgh. That can happen. All right. So to modify the modifier, what we're going to do here is actually we're going to just black out the bottom half of this light. Oh, we're going to bring it more this way. Now what's going to happen is we're going to get more of this light across the top of the person and less spill light down below the bottom of them. That's what we're looking to do. So, let's go ahead and take this shot and see if anything different happens with that picture. Take a look. Hold on a minute. Perfect. Alright. Take a look and see what we got. And sure enough, you can see how the bottom half now is darker. The light is actually falling off the person. That's what you want. You want to fall off. And that's what's going on there. So that's how you use that particular modifier and uh, a couple different ways. The last thing we're going to try to do, uh, I'm going to see if we can do this. We're going to turn the shutter speed up. And we're going to simply work with the flash with the aperture. So you try to get a darker setting here. Uh, it's going to be hard with that big light source. but So we'll get a shutter speed of 250. And I'll go down to 5.6. Once again, that's just off the cuff. It's very bright. Okay, we have to look different next one. Whoops. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. And there we go. So that's pretty. That's a pretty decent shot. I like that one. It's nice and lit. 
nice well lit shot um, you can see where we actually dropped the ambient light a little bit and just lit up more of the actual face itself so let's see what's going on in the chat room here see what you guys might be talking about or asking if you have any questions um, hot-blooded said uh, great smile says you've been smiling really hard today so that's great um, Oh, Jessica said the picture actually see we're on a little delay so she liked the one better with the shutter speed of 30 um, and I'll have to go back through this actually just kind of have a look at those and see uh, more so than the one we just took there so that's okay um, it'd be nice when you edit this video you could add text to show what each setting was when you shot it what's that that's, good. that's a good question so we're or maybe a good yeah good idea so we are going to have to do that we'll have to go back through and actually show you guys uh, each shot I have those in Lightroom so and that's what we were tethered into so I'm sure we can do that um, Kevin said you're doing a great job uh, she, he said you need to come on more often um, he said it actually makes the show even better than just seeing the bearded wonder thanks Kev that's not nah, he didn't say that. I just made that up um, Andy uh, what about in the UK is Mary from where about Mary is not from the UK Andy that's no we were talking to uh, uh, somebody in the UK here earlier who was in the UK I can't remember and uh, is it Andy no Peter. Peter Peter's in the UK Andy I'm sorry about that we were talking to him later um, and Andy said the one is a is a good tip. I'm hoping you're men uh, modifying the modifier. Uh, Peter, right? Peter's in the UK, and Kevin says uh, laugh his backside off. So that's pretty good. So, um, and Jessica was asking earlier about what is the sync speed. The sync speed for a Nikon camera is 250. Don't go above 250, and you won't get that black line. You'll be good to go. So. Uh, oh, Andy's also in the UK. He said he is as well. So, okay. all right. So Mary said she's ready to go to the UK. So you guys need to, uh, you know, we will uh, fly in. She wants to meet your queen, so you can introduce us. Um, there you have it. So as you can see, we're pretty much worldwide. So, and I told Mary she may actually become world famous today. People might start calling her for a modeling career, and she might have to leave and move away. So, but be that what it may be. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you, since we have a little bit of time left, and Mary was gracious enough to say, "Hey, I'll I'll sit the whole hour," because at first I told her half hour, then she said, "You know, I'll sit the whole hour. Don't worry about it. That's great. I I can dig it." I don't remember when she said that, but I know it was sometime. I think she was sleeping. I heard, "I'll stay the whole hour," and so she might be talking in her sleep. But what I'm going to show you now is just as a bonus uh, with a one light setup. And if I can set it up, and I think I can, it's called a clamshell lighting. Now, what clamshell lighting is, it's a beauty type of a lighting, and I'm going to try to. I'm going to have to take my camera off the tripod to give myself some more room here. But it allows you to put light above the person coming down, and then we're going to use the reflector below to bring the light up under the chin to fill in the shadows. So bear with me. Hopefully, we don't uh, poke anybody in the eye with the umbrella. We are going to take the camera off the tripod this one and we will give you a shot of that because again it's one light and you guys can do this at home you know or in your little studios it's it's very easy um, and as you can see and Mary can tell you here is this is not a billion dollar you know 1400 foot square foot studio uh, we're in a very limited space here it's an extra room in our house that we've been using as a little photo studio for some time um, you know it works okay we don't do a whole lot of full body length shots in here and we don't do a whole lot of natural lighting shots in here because we just don't have the windows for it so we just don't do it now to do a clamshell lighting it's very very easy we're gonna try actually I might use the other umbrella for it so I hope it don't get too bright here with this Is that too bright uh, let's see here maybe we can take this oops all right let's put
put just up there. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a smaller shoot-through umbrella. And I told you, I'm starting to like umbrellas more and more. They're very inexpensive. I was on a shoot a few months, like about a month ago. The wind blew one over. It crushed it, bent it all to heck. You know what? Throw it in the trash can and just order another one. They're not that expensive. And then charge your client, of course, the, the price for that umbrella. All right. Let's close this up. Again, this one's very, very versatile. I like having these on the back and these are basically called convertible umbrellas so if you're looking at it and I'm sure I can find the link on Amazon somewhere for you guys all right let's take this off of here the reason I'm taking this one off is it's just too big for this particular shoot that we're gonna do right now the way we're gonna shoot this so take that off we are going to use the stand and the flash and we're going to bring this about here. You're going to raise this up as high as we can get it. Just like so. And when you're shooting into an umbrella, you don't have to shoot directly through the umbrella. Because the umbrella will give you some light around the edges of it. And they say it's more flattering, so we're going to try it. All right. Put this in here. All right. Just like that. Again, we'll try to get as high as we possibly can get it. This is why I told you you don't really want to use a tripod now to shoot through here. Because you're going to have to be in different positions when we shoot this to see how this is going to work. We will take our first reading. Just hold this right there. Yeah. Tilt it up a little bit. Yeah, and bring it back to your face. Right there. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay. So we are at 125 and the aperture is 6.3 and the ISO is still at 100. So I'm going to take a shot here and see what we get. So now i got cables on top of cables. Wow, this is really something. Look at this. you got a $20 mic in one hand and a $1,000 camera in the other. Which one drops first? We don't know. Alright, let's try to shoot this first just with the umbrella up there. Actually move this. Okay, let's see what we get here. You don't like the light or it's us? No, I don't like any of it. Too bright? I look like a mug shot. A mug shot. Okay, so Mary says she looks like a mug shot, so let's tone the light down a little bit. We're going to do that by lowering. Yeah, your mugshot sign. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to All right, let's take another reading right there. Yep. Okay. It's saying 6.3. I don't want to go 6.3. I want to go 2.8. It's not going to let me do it. All right. We're going to try to take a shot here at F2.8. Because Mary says that looks like a mug shot. So we're going to try to get in here again. We're going to see where, see where that looks at there. Yeah, it's very, very bright there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to up the shutter speed to 250. And we're going to back this down.
getting better. All right. And I still don't like how the light is so far down, I think, is what's happening with us here. So we are going to try to pull this down. And the light's actually, folks, it's going to skim is what you want to do. It's going to skim over. More like this. We'll see if we can shoot this and see what we get. I think the umbrella is going to be in the shot. All right. Okay. So she said it is getting better. What's that? Okay, now what I'm going to show you though is the clamshell part of it. This is the first part of the clam. Remember, clamshell is a top and a bottom, right? So you have to have a top light source and a bottom light source. So what we're going to use the bottom light source is you can definitely use your reflector if you want your you know your person to hold that whole reflector out, or use the foam core board we talked about you bought at your craft store a couple weeks ago for about a buck. You say here you're going to hold this. And all that's going to do is just bounce that light and bounce it back up. So let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can get this shot. It should fill in some shadows underneath the chin is what you're looking for. So we got the settings are the same, but we're trying to fill some shadows underneath the chin. So we're looking here. We're saying, well, that looks too bright now. She definitely does not like it. Take another look here. We'll change the aperture setting. There you go. So now you can see the clamshell lighting. People even call that referred to as beauty lighting without having a beauty dish. Because you're bringing the light source across the top of the head and across the bottom of the chin. So you're lighting up both areas. Let's just take a look here and see if anybody has any questions on that. Um, you're getting some great pictures of her. Uh, you should actually print some up and hang them in the house. That's from Jessica. Thanks, after Jessica. Photoshop. She said after Photoshop. Uh, Jake the Snake says great smile. He likes the smiles that she's giving. So that's good. Um, we'll go down here and see some more. Uh, let's see. Right, Jessica, and it is called clamshell lighting. You're right, that's what it's called. Because you have a light source from the top and the bottom. Um, the last shot is the good one, Kevin said. So everybody seems to like that shot. That's the best one out of the whole bunch. Uh, everything's well lit. So that's, well, he liked, out of that series, I think he's saying. Um, let's see. All right, Jake the Snake said this is the best show ever by far, and I appreciate that, Jake. I really uh, that means a lot to me. And you know, having Mary come up and doing a live shot, I think, or a live shoot, is definitely important. So, uh, Peter from the UK liked the last one, the last show we did, which was on the noise, taking pictures of noise and removing it. So that's good. Um, you know, as long as the shows are making an impact, I think that's the key here that we want to make sure uh, everybody's learning with us and you know doing things but i just wanted to prove today that you can use one light and uh, you could do something with that one speed light even if you buy that one i showed you from young nuo um for you know sixty dollars i'm telling you what it's going to work just as just as well oh the bag's getting a little tight there with stuff in it but So even the young Nuo flash, uh, it's a fully manual flash. What I mean is no TTL, but we didn't use TTL today anyway. So for $60, you're going to have a really good flash in it. You're, you can do all these shots that we did today. So I think that's good. We're going to take this away. We'll let uh, our model leave for the day, I think. We'll thank her for her time. Don't hit her in the head with an umbrella. She said she will send me an invoice later on. 
Let me shut this off. Okay. Okay. All done. Okay. Here's everybody saying goodbye. Let's see. Uh, great job, Mary. Bye. Bye, Mary. Have a great day. Go Steelers. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. All right, so that's those shots. Okay, very well. Well, hope everybody really enjoyed this show, and it looks like you did. Um, and hot blooded, um, Jake the Snake, you talked about how much it would set you back. Like I said, the flash, which I'm pretty sure you have a flash already. Um, you need a light stand, some kind of a light stand. You know, find these things on either eBay or Amazon. Don't buy anything really, really expensive. You really don't need it. Um, you just need something that's sturdy enough to hold your light. And then we talked before about the um, the actual flash bracket unit here. And I said you get those on eBay, that flash bracket, that's what it's called. Like six bucks. Um, and you know, you need a wireless trigger system also. I would recommend play the Young Nuo ones for 30. Uh, Jake has them. A lot of you have already bought some wireless triggers. so. You don't have to get real expensive on a trigger, then you need your flash unit, which is going to set you back about 60. So the light itself, stand, bracket, trigger, and flash, you're probably talking, I would think I could probably do it for about $125 to get my light set up. Okay. The umbrella I showed you, that big umbrella is from Amazon. I'll try to find the exact link and I'll put it in the show notes. That umbrella itself probably will set you back uh, maybe 20 bucks uh, and it's nice because it's a convertible you can use it for multi things and that's great the um, the reflector itself $16 on Amazon you don't need to buy a big name brand ones you know they get those sun packs for about $190 or this is good enough it works outside inside it's it's collapsible reversible so it does all kind of stuff so I'm looking here and uh, all right, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we did get through that, Jake the Snake, anyway, or Hot Blooded. We got through that anyway, but you're talking about how much was the model for the day. Um, the model, actually, she does modeling. She probably, you know, she will do modeling for, I don't know, $1,000 an hour sitting fee, maybe. How's that? That's pretty fair. So, I don't know. All right, guys, but I am going to close out this recording by saying, you know, thank you very much. Um, I know we've talked a lot about doing a live shoot uh, such as this. We've done a couple in the past. I don't think they worked out to this magnitude. I hope the video stayed up with the audio. Everything was okay. Um, I didn't see anything in the chat room. It's nice to be able to chat to you guys on the iPad um, to be able to follow along and not have to sit at the computer screen, but be able to sit in the small studio and talk to you folks about everything here going on. Um... And as far as the assignment last week, I don't have time right now to actually play that. Uh, there was, I think, two or three of you that actually turned those in. I do appreciate that. And they were very, very good. Um, I know, uh, let's see, uh, Peter and Andy actually sent those through. Um, and Peter's asking again how to collapse or how to fold the reflector. I'm going to show you that again. Let me get my uh, light stand out of the way here with a strobe on it. Um, and the background I bought, actually, this whole background set up here, this is just a set of background poles. And the tarp itself here, this canvas I purchased for about, probably like 20 bucks. I don't spend a lot on this stuff because I don't use it a lot as far as I'm um, bringing people into the studio. Uh, you know, you guys, I do a lot of weddings and photography work outside the house. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have a little place set up, especially for teaching. Um, let's see. And Jake said, good, the show was good, and he, you know, you had no problem seeing anything. Again, this reflector, uh, well, yep, take your clamp off there first on the bottom. Take your clamp off there. Take this off the top. Again, this is just another light stand. Sometimes you find these in a, like a two light stand kit. All right. This is what it goes in. This is what it goes in right here. Is what this 
has to fit in here. So if you take this thing, all you gotta do is twist it, like kind of like a big, I don't know what you can explain this, but you give it a twist, watch. Twist it with your hands, and as you're twisting it, fold it down at the same time. All right? And twist it over and around. Oh, there you go. And then I just kind of tuck it and just keep moving it in there. It's like a, a wire around the outside of this thing is what it is. So that's how you twist it up and fold it. And then take this here. All you got to do is shove it in there. Just like so. It will take you a couple of times to learn how to do that. Um, you will probably have some choice names for this thing by the time you're done, but then I just push the air out of it. And uh, it doesn't really fit in any light bags unless you fold it, but I just carry it like this. It's great. Uh, it works like a charm. So I'll just stick that over there with the other equipment. Okay. What is next week's assignment? Um, how about next week's assignment we do this. I want you to get your cameras out now and look at your light. Start looking at light you have in your house. If you have some flashes, maybe take some pictures. It doesn't have to be of someone. It could be of something. Uh, Jessica always laughed before in the past and I think it's kind of funny because she said when she first started watching videos, she seen a gnome one. She thought it was a gardening video. This is a lot of times my, uh, I call him my portrait pal. Um, I put him now, I got him a set up on a little tripod mount and I take pictures of this to try to get an idea of how the light hits this, how it reflects off. Um, but I told Mary today I wanted a model because it's better to have somebody, uh, a full, uh, full, you know, featured face with hair because the light can dampen into that light more so than this. But it, I, sh I shoot a lot of pictures of uh, the little gnome. So he's a pretty good partner there. So yeah, please do that. Please take some pictures uh, of some light stuff. Um, and maybe write on that picture what that lighting is. What, what light you used. Available lighting. Um, flash lighting. You know, flash. An actual strobe or a flash. And uh, play around a little bit. I think that's the assignment this week. And post them. And um, I'll take some of these ones of Mary today and I'll post them in there also. But Okay. So other than that, I'm going to close out this recording by saying thank you very much uh, to each and every person out there. Uh, I do have to say that this show was sponsored by Smug Mug, Amazon.com, uh, Green Screen Wizard, and um, Photomatics. So it's kind of who this show was sponsored by. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. And until then, folks, get those cameras out of the bags. Hey, you can't learn it if it's in the camera bag. Get it out of the bag. Keep those sh uh, shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing. And I'll see you back here next time on Photography Weekly. So long and take care. Bye for now.